Welcome to another small talk for you. This morning we're going to continue on past numbers to characters. Characters can be instantiated using the dollar sign, and like numbers, characters are literals in small talk. You can instantiate them just by typing them in. So if I type this dollar sign a class and do a printed on it, you'll notice that it tells me that the class of that is character. And I can do things like send care code to it. I can send CR to the character class and get a carriage return. I can send space to the character class and get a space. And you can print all the characters in the simple ASCII set. So you can do a variety of things on class character, but the point here is that characters are literals like numbers. So let's go on past characters and go to the next one. We have strings. In Smalltalk, strings are designated with single quotes. So I have tick, text, tick. That's how I designate that this is a string object, and a string is nothing but a collection of characters. So I have my collection of literal characters, put them together in between tick marks, I have a string. So here if I do this, I can send messages like size to it, and I can find out how long it is. I can do things like this, ABC as uppercase, and you'll see that it does what I expect. It's going to give me back ABC and uppercase. And I can do a variety of other messages that you can try here. Notice that this at one, this is how I index into collections. Instead of the sort of square brace notation you'll see common in languages like C or things derived from C, in Smalltalk it's a message sent like at colon, and to put in it would be at colon put colon. But the point here is that strings are handled by putting tick marks around things, and they're collections of literal characters. One more page we'll do on this topic today. And that is symbols. Symbols are kind of like strings, but they are unique in the system. So once I create something like prof stuff with a pound sign in front of it, there will only be one instance of that in the entire system. It's unique, which makes it highly useful for things like dictionary lookups. If I want to have a dictionary of things and I want to have a unique keys, a symbol is a great thing to use. And the way I can tell that is this double equal message. Double equal will do a identity check for an object. So if I send two as string equal to two as string, the double equal, notice that this should come back as false because they're not the exact same object. Whereas if I create as string and then send as symbol to it, that should come back as true. And the reason for that is that there should only be one instance of that symbol in the system. Symbols are guaranteed to be unique in the system, whereas strings are going to be different objects that get instantiated. And that's pretty much about it for today. Until next time, have fun with whatever small talk you're using.